welcome back to another video. Hopefully you're following this uh, video playlist on how to do enterprise security, but if you just happen to be popping into the middle of it and the risk-based approach is what you were interested in, I hope this video helps meet your needs. Uh, we're going to talk primarily about the risk-based approach, the RBA as it's called, inside enterprise security. It is a really, really cool feature. Uh, I wish I saw more SIMs having this capability in them. Uh, let's just kind of briefly discuss that. What is it? And so to keep some common terms terminology. When you hear the RBA, we're talking about the risk-based approach, and we're going to talk about correlation searches. Those create notables, and now there are in enterprise security what they call risk rules. They are technically correlation searches, but they're looking at your notables for, and they create risk notables. And so when you actually go into Investigator, you can search for notables and risk notables. I will cover both of those as we demo. Everything I discuss, we're going to talk about. Uh, just strap in and let's let's go through it. Basic concept of uh, with risk-based alerting, analysts receive and respond only to the risk notables created by a risk incident rules instead of responding to all notable alerts. If you think of your general SIM or SOC, every alert comes in, you could get 10, uh, 20, 30, 100, 200 alerts start causing alert fatigue. With the RBA approach, you actually look at all of the notables, all the alerts coming in, and you create a single risk notable that addresses them all when they meet criteria. And we'll explain that. Uh, RBA uses the existing Splunk Enterprise Security Correlation Search Framework to collect all risk events into a single risk index. And so there's a new index. Every time you have a notable, it goes into that risk index. And then your correlation search searches that risk index and says, what are my risky items? What things meet my risk rules in this risk index? And I'm going to create an alert on that. Instead of focusing on the every alert that's firing, you look at the tree, the forest. And again, we'll show that. The uh, events collected in the risk index create a single risk notable when they meet a specific criterion, which warrants an investigation. For example, suppose a single system creates five risk events from several risk rules. Each of these risk events uh, have a low risk score. However, when taken together, these risk events surpass the risk score threshold, which we can set, we'll discuss that, or perhaps they pertain to a specific MITRE attack technique and are associated with unique data sources over multiple time frames. So it could be because multiple alerts hit on, a, on say, an IP address, or there are multiple MITRE techniques that are seen over, uh, over, uh, over an asset or something, or multiple uh, notables across multiple source types. There are a lot of ways you can set your risk rules up. Uh, RBA can pick up on this threat even when the system generates only a single risk notable because it performs correlated alerting that tells tells a high fidelity security story which analysts can investigate. Uh, similarly, RBA uh, helps detect complex behavior over a period of time instead of point in time alerting. So for example, an impatient hacker might try various techniques to attack a single server over a period of time. RBA uses a variety of alerting criteria over varying durations of time to provide insight into your environment, which helps you tune risk incident rules to your environment in addition to threat hunting. So it'll actually look at each time that hacker made an attack on your system and, and make one risk uh, notable for the whole story instead of just individual alerts for each situation that might get lost in the, in the uh, forest of trees. So anyway, let's show that real briefly. I'm going to show a risk rule here. These are risk rules. Attack, uh, MITRE attack threshold exceeded for an object over previous seven days. An object could be a network address, a asset, an identity, a user, and it's going to look at so many different TTPs firing in the different categories over the last seven days, or a risk threshold exceeded for an object over a 24-hour period. So for example, each time an event fires, it gives a risk score of, say, 1. But you have your risk, thre risk threshold set at 100, and in a 24-hour period, this IP address has a risk score of over 100. It's going to create you a risk notable. And so anyway, let's go see this in practice. How does this work? Oh, let's just go over. Here's another example of a risk alert of a risk rule. Same error on many servers detected. The error itself may not be malicious, but the fact that it occurred 
on many, many different systems might be an indication of something wrong. And this has these risk rules can actually use a lot of machine learning. Like they will set thresholds. I'm, this is not by any means a list of all the risk rules, but you can set machine learning uh, what is normal and what jumps out of that, add it to a risk rule, things like that. So it's really quite it's quite powerful. I'm going to come over to my correlation search. Remember that this is a video series, and so I've been building upon pieces. Last video series, I built a correlation search. And in that correlation search, if you remember it, I set up, I'm grabbing one event from my network logs. This was not truly a malicious event. I was just trying to pull back an IP address so that I have events to investigate. And I assigned a MITRE attack, and I said we'd come back to it. Here, we're actually going to see that in place. So I now have T1143, T1161. Remember, I said that we could do multiple MITRE attacks over, uh, over a seven-day period. So if I have multiple correlation searches, in this case, that alert's not going to fire off. I only have one correlation search firing, but here are where those MITRE attack techniques fall in. Whatever uh, you're using, CIS, kill, chain, NIST, whatever the case may be, if it falls into multiple of those categories, then it will start looking for those. And it, it's mapping them saying, all right, we have reconnaissance going on. We have... Uh, elevation of privileges, things like that. It's going to say, oh, we're crossing a lot of different TTPs. I'm going to create a risk rule. The risk rule will create a risk notable for it. All right, coming down, I have added one thing to my correlation search from last time. And that was, I went to add new adaptive response, and I hit, I missed it, risk alert. May not show it since I already put it in here. Well, that's too bad. So you can't see it. It's already filled out right here. Risk analysis. And so I look for add a new response and there will be a risk analysis. I click it and then I put in my risk message. And it can be anything you want. I'm going to give a risk score. Now because I don't want to sit around and wait forever for this thing to fire, the I'm going to put a high risk score. I don't want this to... Uh, take forever for me to be able to demo this being triggered. Normally you wouldn't go put a risk score this high. I'm going to choose my risk object field, and that's the source IP, and the risk object type, and that's a system. One of the things, if you check the documentation, I got confused until recently, system and network artifacts. System is actually pointing to your, can be used to tie to your inventory assets that you load into enterprise security. We'll discuss that later, but if you know what this system is, or you're, you expect that you would know what the system is, call it a system. You can put it as a network artifact. It doesn't really matter, but if you want to get some added information in case it matches your list of identities and assets, which we'll talk about in a few uh, videos, mark it as system. Uh, but it, it's it's okay either way. If it's a IP, I mean, if it's an identity such as a u, uh, username or something like that, use user. These would be for hashes. Um, host artifacts might be uh, keys uh, uh, keys for an operating system. Tools would be software. Other is whatever you want to. But it's just going to kind of categorize them together. And then, so I've now created a risk object. That's the machine that might now be risk at risk because it's getting hit with notables. Then we create threat objects, and that threat object is the destination IP, and it is a network object. I could have, and I just write in, this allows you to put anything you want in, I'm gonna call it a network object. And this video won't demonstrate it, but there is another video I'm, I'll be doing where we'll actually take all of your sources and your threats and give you nice dashboarding on that so you can see all the different threats out there and all your uh, sources that are we're not going to have time to cover it in this video but keep uh, look down below this is a video playlist and there'll be a whole lot more con con uh, content there so anyway when i've done that you typically want to you don't have to have a threat object but you definitely want a, a risk object uh, the risk so i fill this out and i hit save and we should see, now if I go and create a query, duplicate, we find out how often this fires off. My uh, cron job says it's firing off every five minutes. 
So I, after I've hit save, there's no reason to save because I didn't do anything to it. But this has been running for a little bit. I wanted it to be already done so I don't have to sit and wait for it. I'm going to come in here to search. And if I go look at my index equals risk, as I said, it creates a whole new index for you. Index equals risk, had 10. I'm just going to look over the last uh, 60 minutes. This worked right. I should have some events. And there they are. Every five minutes, I have an alert coming in. Why is it every five minutes? Because that's what I set my cron job to work as. And if I look into it, I can see that there should be a risk score. Here's uh, This is going to be my MITRE techniques. Remember, I put those in there. I'm going to see the app. Here's the data that came in. Let's see if I can find a risk score. Risk, 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 risk. So we can see that it's assigning. There's your risk object being assigned. Risk score is a 20. Grab one event from the network logs. Sweet. And we got the source IP, threat object. All that information is all there. Now, I don't expect you to actually go look in this when you're doing searching. That's why we have risk rules. If I come back to my content management, and let's go look at this risk threshold exceeded for object over a 24-hour period. So if I come in here and I go look at this, this is a risk rule. It's actually, it's a correlation search, but it's specifically doing all the risk pieces you need. And if you read it, it's going to say where a risk, it's going to assign a risk threshold. We can see here, oh, wow, my risk threshold I've already adapted is really, really low. Why did I set my default out of the box? It comes at 100. I must have already modified this when I was demoing it for myself. So any risk score is going to create a risk notable because it exceeded but it's, it exceeded that 10. Uh, by default, it's 100. I'll put it back to 100 because I've adjusted my risk scores. But what it's going to do is it's going to go look at my risk index, and it's going to go look for every item in there and say, hey, as a collaborative group over the last 24 hours, is the risk score greater than 100? If it is, create me a risk notable. And it doesn't do much else. It just creates that little notable. And so all you got to do, and you can see that it runs every five minutes but it looks back 10 minutes. It starts 10 minutes ago. I actually learned this one the hard way. If you create an alert and you're wanting to test it, I set my correlation search to run every five minutes. It creates an alert, but then not immediately was this risk alert created. I have found that you almost need to wait about 15 minutes depending on when your search is run because what's going to happen is you need to have five minutes go by, you'll run your test correlation search, this little guy that we're talking about here, we demoed that I built here and that where I did the head one, it'll run five minutes. This one will kick off and it'll say, it'll look, it'll start, but it's going to go back 10 minutes. This one doesn't exist 10 minutes ago. It exists now. And then five minutes later, this will kick off again. Now this may exist or it may not, depending on when it uses its time written into the risk. And so you need to wait at least three periods of time. Basically, just wait 15 minutes and you should get it in there. And that's all solely for de uh, testing purposes. Just be patient and recognize that there are windows it's got to fit within. Anyway, so now that I've done that, let's go to my incident review. We're going to refresh this page and see what comes in. And hopefully, I should see my risk alerts, my, my correlation search is coming in, and they should be coming in every five minutes, but I also should have a risk notable because I've given enough time. Oh, and look, there I have it. We have, these are my normal alerts, and then here is my 24-hour risk threshold exceeded for system, 192.168.0.128. Here's the risk object, here's the risk assort with it, risk score with it, and how many risk events did it see in that period of time. It saw one, it just created, it's happened once, that's good. Um, and you notice in its security domain is threat. I wanted to show this here, we've got, not this one. Yeah, so we have notables and risk notables. I'm going to make all my notables go away for now. I'm going to just click Risk Notable, apply this, and that'll make all the other stuff disappear, and we'll just look at this Risk Notable. This is what I meant about, now I'm looking at not the forest, I'm looking at the forest, not all the trees. Instead of this alert that was firing every five minutes, every five minutes, every five minutes, I'm now getting one that's crossed a threshold. It's created a risk score, it's gone above that th uh, threshold, and I look at it, I expand it, First thing you'll notice is 
This is not part of a correlation notable. You don't normally get the MITRE attack. Here we have the different areas of the MITRE technique, reconnaissance, resource development, initial access, execution, persistence. Why do I have this LC load? What we see is that we got an alert based off of that. I have an alert off the hidden window. Where did that come from? Because I picked, wrong correlation search, I picked these two MITRE techniques. So they're being mapped into the alert. And so I can actually see and go, oh, we got a persistence and a defensive agent. Mm, what if I had a, and what if it was even worse? That's some reconnaissance, some initial access, some lateral movement. I might be able to immediately detect, ooh, from all these alerts that were aggregated together on this system, it sure looks to me like we've got ourselves something serious. Something that I may not have paid attention to with all the, the individual alerts coming in. But when I see them aggregated together, I go, oh, there's something to uh, really pay attention to. We can do sub-techniques. I'm going to leave that out. Um, so if we come down here, we have some other abilities to we can look into. So if I click this risk object, for example, I can do a risk event timeline. And I can actually, it's, there won't be a whole lot there. I just want to demo it. You can actually see the timeline of each of the alerts. Now realize in the ideal world, you didn't have one alert created. It's going to have all of the different alerts that created that risk score and over time where they were at, and you'll be able to see them and where they paired up. Does that make sense? And so you'll see each alert and how they all fit over this period of time. So you'll be able to see a timeline for all the, all the different notables to that specific risk system. I can also do, let's see, where, there's some others. If I come in here, there should be a threat object, risk object. Let's see, I can do a, there's my rule, view the individual risk attribution. So if I come in here and I do a drill down, I can see other pieces to it. I can see what created it, et cetera. There's just a lot of drill downs. I'm not going to cover everything here. There will be a lot more sub videos here that will give you other uh, what you can do with this information. What you can do is drill downs, et cetera. Um, I just want to keep it real simple for you. I am going to show one other thing we can do, ways to fill in some extra information. I can come in here, incident management, content, Con oh, that wasn't what I wanted. Incident management. Actually, I'll do another video where I show adjusting the risk, or I can actually send risks in manually to these items if I see something I want to do to pump up its risk score. Uh, anyway, this is just the basic of RBA. It's It allows you to aggregate all that stuff together and solve notables from a forest perspective instead of from the individual tree perspective. I'm going to have a bunch more videos before I move on to the next stage of enterprise security. So keep coming back. I hope this helps you move from being a lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja. And if you got comments or you like it, show me, uh, put the comments down below, join my Discord channel. Let me know what's uh, what you'd like to see. And I look forward to hearing from you. Take care.